Meet us here, we pray, Heavenly Father. Join our hearts in wholehearted worship. Breathe your word into our souls. Engrave your covenant of grace into our minds and hearts. In the name of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us proceed with we have come into this house. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 365, Come to us, creative spirit, into our Father's house. Hymn 365.
very good morning to all. I am Canon Morel. I am sitting in for Canon Isaac, who is on sick leave. We extend a very warm welcome to all who may be visiting with us today here at St. Cyprian's. We welcome especially Mrs. Michaela Bourne, who will be our guest speaker for the morning, and celebrating their 50th anniversary, the Barclays Singers. Very warm welcome to you, Barclays Singers. We continue our service with the sentence. Be imitators of God as we love the children, and walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires. into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, but we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain. Kindly be seated for the ministry of the word. The first lesson is taken from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the commandment that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will give their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for the service, Psalm 51, verses 1 to 13, Psalm 51.
A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 5, beginning at verse 5. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. The hymn for a gradual is hymn 651. It is a thing most wonderful, almost too wonderful to be. Hymn 651. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it, does, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. 
and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, the voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of Christ. Good morning once again, church. Continuing in our Lenten discussion on let the children come to me, the expert this morning is Ms. Makeda Bourne from the National Council on Substance Abuse. Makeda Bourne is a substance abuse prevention officer as well as a social worker. She has responsibilities including designing and implementing drug prevention programs like the NCSA's Prevention First Parents Program, which is really an online session. Makeda is a certified drug prevention trainer, a NEPOD educator, a counselor, as well as a social work intern supervisor, among other duties. Makeda enjoys working with the youth, the deaf, parents, and she has a mission to see families free of substance abuse. So I want you to put your hands together and give a warm welcome to Ms. Makeda Bourne. Thank you so much. Good morning to everyone. Thank you so much for your invitation, your welcome, and introduction. As said, I am from the National Council on Substance Abuse, and we are located just a short stone throw away in the First Avenue. We are the big blue building with parking underneath at the top of the avenue. So if you need more information, direction, feel free to visit us. Our mission is to promote sustain action for positive change in the fight against substance abuse and in the facilitation of drug education, prevention, and drug-free lifestyle. This morning, based on our invitation, I am hoping that you walk away understanding a little more about drugs and the effects of drugs on persons 5 to 11 years old and what you can do to prevent this age group from using drugs. At the NCSA, our vision is to be the authority in Barbados for drug 
abuse reduction. We have many services which include research and information. We go into primary and secondary schools. We are in the community, workplaces, drug education training. We do counseling for individuals who experiment and abuse drugs, as well as their families. We are also in places like churches and wherever we are invited. This morning, I want to do this presentation under the theme, Let Your Light Shine. I was told by Reverend Isaac that I will be speaking to a mature con congregation and encouraging you to encourage younger ones. So, when I say let your light shine, I am saying let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven according to Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. You may be asking the question, but what is light? And if you have just asked that, thank you so much for asking that question. So when I say light, most of us will go straight to the light we can see. Most of the light in this part of the world we, see, we receive from the sun. In addition to that, we have things like light bulbs, like the lights that we are seeing on now. We have things like lasers that give us light. Light is a form of energy that moves in a straight line. It also reflects off solid objects. And that reflected light enters our eyes and it allows us to see. So why do we need to entertain light and let our light shine? so that persons around us can see. How many of you know that children do not always do what we say, but they do what they see us doing? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, according to John 8:12. So we must understand, if we're following Jesus, there must be some form of light coming out of us, and we must allow that light to shine. There are some quotes that I want you to recognize. One, the more light you allow within you, the brighter the world you live in will be. And the second quote, simply shine your light on the road ahead and you are helping others to see their way out of darkness. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, there are things in the world that come to either dim our lights or try to put them out. One of the things that you may already think about may be things like lies, stealing, pride, murder, idolatry, vengeance, perversion, but how many of you know that drugs are also used, and used in the wrong form can also put person's lights out? So what really is a drug? A drug is any chemical substance that when put inside the body, it changes the way the mind and the body work. Some of these drugs are natural and some are man-made. So when we think about our five to 11 year olds, what type of drugs are in Barbados that aim to put the light out of our young people? These drugs in Barbados include alcohol, cigarettes, inhalants, and not inhaler, inhalants, marijuana, medication used incorrectly. According to our primary school survey, 27% 27, 27 of the respondents in 2020 stated that it was very easy to access most of these drugs. So when we think about alcohol, for instance, let's think about those wines, Smirnoff, Hennessy, Banks, Red labels and black labels. 
And I also want you to think about some other things that have been drugs that you may not realize, like Twist, Shandy, I Agnes Stewart Bitters. Yes, Agnes Stewart Bitters has an alcohol, 42.7%, 40, if I remember correctly. These are things we introduce to the children in the home unaware of the impact it has on the body. Other forms, tobacco, in Barbados, we have something known as Fanta, and not the drink, but Fanta, a brown leaf. We have cigarettes, cigars, things known as blunt, chewing tobacco, pipes. We also have no e-cigarettes, and some of you might be even familiar with something known as snuff. And if the young person beside you don't know what's snuff, you tell them a little later. We also have in Barbados something known as hookah or e-cigarettes that comes where e-cigarettes fall from, where young people are vaping different substances, including nicotine and the drug found in marijuana, which is Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol. What persons do not recognize is that cigarette, when it is not lit, has over 400 known chemicals, which include the same as poison, rocket fluid, ammonia like what is in toilet cleaner. We have things like industrial solver and barbecue lighter. Just a taste of some of the things found in a cigarette. But the main drug is nicotine, the one that when it goes into the brain, it says, I want more cigarettes. We also have to know things like the chewing tobacco. Those things are very, very addictive and can cause cancer, mouth, cancer in the mouth, as well in the trachea. In Barbados, we hear a lot about marijuana or the cannabis plant. This too is something noted very easily accessed by our young persons. And we have a lot of persons thinking that marijuana is legal in Barbados. So permit me to use this opportunity to say marijuana is still illegal or not allowed by the law in Barbados. We are confused with medical marijuana, and in your spare time, you can find us. We'll give you more information so that you're not confused and think that you can be growing marijuana in your backyard or your patio to brew any tea. So, please note marijuana is still a controlled drug. The possession of marijuana is illegal, and you can be charged if found with it. The supply, meaning you growing and giving gifts like a plant, is still illegal, and you will be considered trafficking even if you're older in society. This must not be confused, though, with medical marijuana. Medical marijuana, that is what has been allowed by the law. This grade and plant is different, and it is one that has to be recommended or prescribed by a doctor. So I know a lot of young persons that especially want to walk around with a spliff. I say they're smoking for their glaucoma. I don't know why they want to call it on themselves, sir, but you know. So we have to know the difference and know that once a person, and if you have been prescribed medical marijuana, you must walk around with your prescription in terms of the recommendation cards that if you are pulled over by the police, that you can show them. Marijuana comes in many forms, including hashish oil. It comes no more popular in Barbados in food form or edibles including brownies, things that look like chocolate cake, seasoning. Some people brew it as tea. Some people mix it in all types of food. With all this information I've given you, how can this help you help the young person? One, teach a young person how to shine without drugs in their system. How can they do that? 
educating them about the harms of drugs. You also have to be able to share your own testimony with the young person and be honest, because young people know when we are lying. Be honest with them, share your heart with them about your household values as it relates to drug use or being healthy. Let that young person, 5 to 11 years old, be occupied. They are full of energy and telling them to sit still does not work. So it's important to enroll them in school, in community programs, sport groups, and different extracurricular activities to keep them active. You also have to help that young person by allowing them to not be sheltered from what is happening, but show them I have teachable moments. If a person chooses to use this drug, what can happen? I show them all the information. And it's not accurate to just tell them they will end up homeless because there are persons who use drugs and seemingly functioning. So we have to let them know about the effects of drug use inside of their bodies, on the outside of their bodies, as well as how it can affect you, the person who can be exposed to secondhand smoke. And secondhand smoke is if a person smokes, breathe out that smoke and then you inhale that. And we are also seeing reports about third-hand smoke. Third-hand smoke is if a person smokes in a particular area, the fabrics in that room, it captures the chemicals. So for instance, someone smokes in a bedroom all the time, someone else who does not smoke goes and sleep over a period of time in that bedroom, that person can, guess what, breathe in those chemicals and over a period of time, they can show signs and symptoms as if they were smoking. So ladies and gentlemen, I also want you to challenge the young person to love Jesus Christ. Their faith and obedience to him will be definitely a strong hold to prevent them from the life of drugs. Allow both males and females to express themselves. On a side note, I went to, I was doing a session at, I think, Government Industrial School, and a big, I was showing them a clip of a man crying, and a big argument ensued because these young boys believe that men should not cry. I want you to know it is okay for males, like anyone else, to cry and express themselves else, they might very well want to turn to the drug for comfort. Family members, you can give that young person chores, even at five years old. Give them a schedule. This is important in helping develop the character of that person. And lastly, I want to encourage you, parents and guardians, to read. Make sure you're reading factual information. Because more than likely, that young person you're going to work with already know a lot about drugs, whether it's true or not. Spend time researching what you want to say to them. Find time for you to renew your strength. It is important you take care of yourself first, or as they will say in the airplane, you put on your mask first, and then you work with the young person. I want to encourage those of you who truly love working with young people, you are the ones to work with them. Love them despite their mistakes. And drug use, that is a mistake, not a life sentence. Be responsible for them. And most of all, reach out to them. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your invitation, and I hope you have a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to have the opportunity to thank our speaker on behalf of your priest in charge, uh, Canon Isaacs. I have to tell you something though. No red label, no black label, no green label. I am now afraid to drink water. <laughs> the 
Ms. Bourne, you spoke with the authority of someone who knew her subject. You spoke with the love of someone who loves people. You spoke with great authority and interest and passion. And there is nothing which can replace a sense of passion and love and a feeling of dedication. We are indebted to, to your talk this morning, and I am sure that the, most of us in this congregation will go away having learned quite a lot, and above all, being very careful what we put in our stomachs. Thank you very much indeed, ma'am. We appreciate it. And now we continue with our service as we ask you to stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Shall we stand? I believe in God. Good morning. Intercession Form B, page 107. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our work, work may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have enjoyed, who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask. Help us to ask only what accords to your will, and the good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Holy Spirit group pray. O Holy Spirit, soul of my soul, I adore thee. Enlighten, guide, strengthen, and console me. Tell me what I ought to do, and command me to do it. I promise to be submissive in everything that thou shalt ask of me, and to accept all that thou promise, permittest to happen to me. Only show me what is thy will. Amen. Amen. We are to penitence. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins using Form B. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, but we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and to keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are the body of Christ. By the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, and have all been made to drink of the one Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share that peace. Kindly be seated. For 50 years in this country, the name Barclays Singers has been synonymous with good music all over the island and uh, beyond. This morning here at St. Cyprian's, we are privileged and pleased to have them with us as they come to celebrate their 50th anniversary and give thanks to Almighty God. I understand that they have two items to offer. Great is the Lord, and when in our music, God is glorified. Ladies and gentlemen, the Barclay Singers. Mm.
Good morning, church. First, I would like to thank your priest in charge, Canon Isaac, also Canon Merle, the parochial church council, and you, the members of the congregation, for allowing us to worship here this morning. The Barclays Singers in the last 50 years have become a well-known group of singers of rich tonal quality, balance, and an excellent varied repertoire. Started in 1974, and it's significant to note that the first recital of the Barclays Singers in December 1974 was held in this church. <laughs> At a media cost of one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> now the Barclays series have progressed from a small group of about 20 voices to now boasting a committed 40 voices strong. In the early years since 1974, the Barclays Singers merely perform for Christmas recitals and some corporate events hosted by the then Barclays Bank. Since then, as a rec registered charity, we have readily made ourselves available to bring musical relief by fulfilling requests from churches, organizations, and overseas bookings. We have also made monetary and other donations to many organizations and individuals. The choir has a committee of persons of a cross-section of ages who meet regularly to chart its way forward. The president, yours truly, Adrian Boyce, Leads a team of 10 other members who conduct the business of the choir. The choral director is Mr. Julian Boyne, a renowned pianist, organist, and musician. Over the years, the Barclays Singers have traveled through the Caribbean, where they perform in Guyana, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, and St. Lucia with plans to take our talent beyond the region in 2024. In this Jubilee year, the Barclays Series have planned a number of activities to celebrate this magnificent milestone and encourage all to stay connected to the social and other media for the opportunity to experience the Barclays Sears. I thank you. I want to invite Canon Merle to come beside me and accept this, I almost said envelope. <laughs> but this is a monetary donation to the church and for the work they are. Thank you, sir, and thank you, Barclays Singers. On behalf of St. Cyprian's, I am told that good things come in small packages. <laughs> good morning, once again. I too must express my sincere appreciation to the Barclays Singers for gracing us this morning with such wonderful music. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm sure the rest of the congregation did as well. And of course, in our welcome, we would also encourage you to come again 
as soon as you are able to, I'm sure you will get a much better appreciation of your wonderful singing. Thank you. I would also at this stage like to extend a warm welcome to all of you, including our visitors from the Barclays Singers, and of course our special guest this morning, Ms. Bourne, Makeda Bourne. Are there any more visitors with us this morning? We are all hometown people today, thank you. But I'm advised that there are some ex Barclays singers who are visiting, but are not full time members of the choir at the moment. But if you are in that category, can you please stand so that we can also extend a warm welcome to you? Listen, 50 years is not a short time period. And for an organization to exist for 50 years, you must be doing something right. And they pay a tribute to the leadership, all right, as well as the members for that length of time. So thank you all for that wonderful tribute. Time for celebration, birthdays. Among our celebrants this morning, we have Sophia Nurse. Sophie's at the back, Sophia. She, start, she tells me she's approaching Sweet 16 at the moment, so we wish her well. We also have Gloria Chase. Gloria, Gloria's at the back. Happy birthday, Gloria. Are there any more birthdays? Visitors? Yes? Yeah. Thursday, your name is? <laughs> Kathy Ann. Kathy Ann, birth is on Thursday. Happy birthday, Kathy Ann. Any more? We do hope you have an enjoyable day. Oh yes, a quiet one. <laughs> Cheryl, on Tuesday. Happy birthday, Cheryl. <laughs> She's only 20. Okay. Plus what? Plus, plus what? <laughs> okay, can we have our birthday song, please? We have a special blessing for all those who are experiencing a birthday this week. This will be after communion. For other notices, we would just like to remind you that there will be no open air service this evening. No open air service this evening. And please plan accordingly. I would also like to extend again our heartfelt thanks to Canon Morrill, who has kindly consented to assist in service last week and this morning in the absence of our priest in charge, Canon Isaac, who is recuperating well and should be back with us shortly. So I would like to extend our thanks once again to Canon Morrill, who's done a magnificent job so far in assisting in our church during the absence of our priest in charge. Father Morrow. Oh, I thought he had uh, gone to sit beside his wife, who I understand is with us, Mrs. Morrill. Please stand, let us see who you are. 
A warm welcome to you, and thank you for attending the service today. Our Lenten Sacrificial continues, where you are expected to, um, both members of the church and visitors, to sacrifice at least a dollar a day for the Lenten period. That amounts to $50, despite the fact that you know that Lent is supposed to be 40 days, right? <laughs> but we are looking for a $50 contribution for as a Lenten sacrifice. And if you include the weekends, I suppose, then we can have 50 so we are encouraging you to continue, and just these funds will be presented on Good Friday. I will be used for the work of the church, as well as to make contributions to worthy causes, which may include the Blackhead Singers, me. <laughs> Remember now, we are also entering Holy Week next week, and to remind you, we will commence our service with Palm Sunday, and our walk will be the usual walk. For those of you who, who are in a position to do so, uh, the usual walk will be um, turn left, then the first right, then the first right. <laughs> and that should take you past St. Michael's School, straight on to Bark Belmont Road. Then you make another right, first right, and that brings you back through this gap. And we are right here again. So a short, nice walk, nice early walk for early Sunday next week. Wednesday in Holy Week, we will be having our healing service. Now this is a very special service. And the canon has asked me to remind you of the special things that we plan to do on that Sunday. Now listen carefully. You're the canon advising that you take a piece of paper, write down on it all the problems that you are facing today, all the trials and tribulations, write them down. Also, the people that you may have offended, and in some cases, the people that you think may have offended you, and bring that list on Wednesday at the healing service, and we will place them on the altar in an effort to free you of those burdens. All right? So think about it carefully. If you need three sheets of paper, go ahead. <laughs> right? But the aim is to get you to relieve yourself of these burdens for Holy Week so that you can be refreshed and renewed coming Easter Sunday. We would also like to remind you of the anniversary, sorry, we're going on on the Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, obviously it's on si at 6 p.m. We'll be having sung mass, and then our Good Friday service is at 8 a.m. The liturgy for Friday will be used then. On Easter Eve, We'll be having the Easter Vigil at 6 p.m. And this is an, a service that I would encourage all of you to try to attend. It's quite solemn, but it is an experience. So that is on Easter Eve, Saturday, at 6 p.m. here in the church. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll be having our sung Mass and Communion at 8 a.m. And... All of you are invited to attend. Just some other notices, the anniversary service for the 200th anniversary of the Anglican Church in Barbados. This will be held on July the 21st 
and this service will mark the start of celebrations for the 200th year of service to Barbados. On August the 24th, we'll be having a lecture by historian Reverend Kennel Mill Titus, and his emphasis will be on the history of the church, which all of you know has been cloaked in controversy, especially in relation to its role in slavery. So Canon, Canon Titus will be addressing that particular issue during that lecture, August the 24th. On October the 26th, then there will be a community outreach day, um, and then that will, the plans for that will be made known later. If you remember last Sunday, we took a special collection for the, for the, to assist in defraying the cost of this, of this 200 year um, celebrations. And the amount we collected last Sunday was $1,500. You can clap for that. Yes, that is a, a, a real contribution. $1,500 as our contribution to the 200th year anniversary. If there are others who are still willing to make a contribution, we will readily accept it to take it to almost $2,500 if you um, are in a position to do so. There are one or two other notices, not to keep you too long. Um, first of all, we'll be having some information provided to you by Brenda in relation to our very important function on April the 1st. Brenda? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So far, we have had a beautiful service. And I will presumptuously say that Barclays Singers will be at our Christmas in the courtyard. I'm being presumptuous, OK? Julian you, can, Julian, you can put that in your calendar, OK? All right, as most of you would know, we are having you're aware that we are having a tea party and Easter bonnet parade, which will be held on Easter bank holiday, April the 1st, at the Urban Haywood Center, Christ Church Parish Church, from 3 to 6 p.m. We will be fe featuring the Barbados Police Service Band, and we will also be having another artist. We will be catering for 200 people. I only have 16 tickets left. And I'm sure they will all go by the time as I leave church this morning. Um, the deadline for the congregation, you know the payment is next Sunday. And uh, there, somebody said about paying at the door. That is not even a consideration. So don't even go there. Everybody enters must have a ticket. There will be a first, second, and third prize for the best Easter bonnet. And there will be a prize for the best decorated walking stick or cane. So to you gentlemen, we don't want to leave you out. You have your walking cakes and you're gonna model and dress it up. And we also have a prize for the gentlemen with their walking sticks. Um, there will be a door prize for lunch for two at a well-known hotel. Fortunately, and I must say we've been doing a lot of begging and we have been succeeding. So I have a lot of gifts to give away. And we are going to have, we're gonna to have to do a raffle for some of them. And the raffle will be $5, so walk with a lot of $5 bills, because I am not walking with a float. So you bring your $5 bills, and they are really nice gifts. And you can't buy them for $5. So we're gonna to have to do about four or five raffles for the items that we have. Now those persons who have reserved tickets, please remember you have to pay $10 for your ticket, for your table, who have reserved tables. We have only 10 tables will be reserved. We are having 200 people and everybody has to be seated properly. So that's it. So this will be our last update. Anything now I'm doing is collecting money. We have dotted our I's and we've crossed our T's 
and but the demand for the tickets are coming in. As I said, I had 17 before I got here. By the time I get here, I have 16 tickets left for this morning. So everything is in order, and we will see you all on the 1st of April. And for those persons in the choir that Val didn't sell tickets to, I have the tickets. Y'all can get them before you leave. Okay? So thank you very much. Thank you, Brenda. Just one, two other notes. Bible study will resume on April the 17th, and it will be a joint study comprising the churches of St. Cyprian, St. Mary, and St. Matthew. The Zoom information is available in your bulletin, and then the confirmation class will also begin, and that will be from May the 11th, and that will be at 9.30. There will be Easter Bible School from April 8th to the 12th, and this is for children 5 to 11, and those young at heart, persons over 60. More information will be coming to you. And finally, the um, church, along with the ministry, is involved, the community development is involved in two projects, and finally, I will ask, Grace Wickham, just to say briefly what these two projects are um, since it will be involved in the church and the government department. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Canon Isaacs would have indicated before, two programs are being developed at our church for the enrichment of the lives of two groups who are considered most vulnerable in our society. The first, as Oriel said, it will be catering to members of the 60 plus group at our church and we are also inviting people from outside the church. If you, a date has not been set yet for the start of this program of enrichment for our seniors. Canon, but this will be done soon. Canon will email you or WhatsApp you about that program. There's also a flyer that we are going to adjust and application forms that we are going to adjust and send to you. Your input is welcomed um, with ideas for the senior citizen, citi citizens of our church. The second enrichment program is for children between five and 11. The, in our church, and also children in the church's community. This is expected to happen on Saturday mornings between 10 and 1 p.m. The expected launch is Sunday, May the 12th, 2024. A meeting will be held shortly for all those persons who are interested in being resource persons, or if you know resource persons, you can always let me know. Also, we want to have all the names of the children presently here at our church between five and 11 who will be interested in, excuse me, in taking part in this program. Uh, we are going to be doing things like reading, mathematics, social skills, how to handle bullies, how to manage anger, and we will also be offering homework help. I want to recognize the contribution of the Department of Community Development. 
the Canon organized two meetings already with the department and we want to sincerely thank them for their input and we look forward to their continued support. You will be given more information later on the program and if you are interested in helping out or if you have children that you know would benefit from this program, you can always get in contact with me. Thank you very much. Okay, finally, members of the congregation, you now have the opportunity to show how lustily you can sing, as well as the Barclays singers. The Offertory Hymn, 418. I am pressing on the upward way, new heights I am gaining every day. Hymn 418.
Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and a lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. I'm also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give for thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father Almighty, everlasting God, for you bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, but fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Eucharistic prayer E. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom you brought creation into being. In your great love you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, he overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, we remember his death we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer you, Father, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. As we partake of this holy food of new and unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Cyprian, and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power as our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near and receive the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, with faith and a thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this Lord's table, most merciful Father, trusting in our own righteousness, but only in your boundless mercy. We are not even worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the Lord ever the same, ever merciful. Grant, therefore, Lord of grace and love, that we may so eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that with bodies and souls made clean from every stain of sin, we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
our first communion hymn, 604. One hundred and twelve.
Our next communion hymn, 625. Time for the blessing, children, and those others who are celebrating special days, birthdays, anniversaries, to come forward for your blessing.
the post-communion prayer. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one within one fold, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Our post-communion hymn, hymn 413, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. Hymn 413. 